So now we just want to quickly tidy up the front, bring that all the way around, select edge, select object snap. Yep, that's done a weird double click. So delete that. It's not the most, it's not the simplest process, it's not the quickest, but it works. Um, and we can come up to there. So then what we'll probably want to do, at least in your own thing you'll want to do, is you kind of want to make sure these are all a bit more even than I've done. Um, so you can edit these and what you can do is actually change the coordinate space we're working in. What that means is it changes the orientation of our line runners would be the gumball or whatever you might want to call it where we can translate things from. So view space always faces it towards the camera, uh, which can be really useful if you want to pull it out in a specific direction. Uh, selection space is excellent because it goes normal to uh, the direction of the line you pick uh, or the surface that it's on. So this is great for pulling things out or pushing things in and we'll probably be going with this one uh, for here. So what we can do is looking on the right plane, you know, these one, this looks a bit thick. We drag that down, drag that down, bring this one up and bring that one up as well. And it's starting to look a lot better already. Obviously you're gonna spend a bit more time on this but something like that should suffice quite well. So what we need to then do is to mirror it. Um, it's good because you've all paid attention and made sure your thing is designed around a center plane like we always practice. So we're gonna select mirror duplicate and that's gonna allow us to duplicate this body right across the middle. We need to select a mirror plane and because there's a gap there, we're gonna turn off weld. What that does, if they were touching uh, along the center line, it would weld them together, but because they're not, we won't. And all we have to do there is add in a bridge from that side, a side one, select side two. And we just wanna turn the amount of faces down to one. So it only creates one face as it goes across, and that's good. Uh, we're gonna do the same for the back by selecting bridge and it's still got that one there. Um, sometimes when it does a edge like this, it's because the number of surfaces is odd. Um, you can fix this by inserting an edge that's 50, which means halfway, and then it just tidies it up. So we can do this here, insert edge, and it's gonna put one right in between them, and that's pretty perfect there. Okay, so now I'm gonna hit the save button. It saved a backup, we're good. And we need to start looking at how we're gonna actually bring in these sort of, um, webbed elements or lines across the whole thing. Um, so we could do it quite simply, we could do it really complex, like, uh, you know, with all these. Uh, so it looks like, you know, if we go for something that goes straight across, um, kind of close to the middle. Um, so what we really are trying to do is chain this all the way back to this. Um, and there's plenty of options, so we can start off with a smaller section by bridging from here to here. And what we might do is go straight with the face snapping again and just bring it out, keep it relatively square, come across, oh, that's done that same thing again as it likes to do. Bring it across um, and well, let's say we'll go, yeah, we'll go all the way down here. So bring it out quite far. And you want to try and keep it, you know, perpendicular. Um, so we can select that and we can select that and that should have bridged that together. So now when we go, okay, it'll go and smooth that out. 
and you can see how you know this is starting to work out we're getting that smooth surface transition um, we can edit these by inserting edges um, which does make it quite a bit sharper uh, if this can go and what we can do is insert points if we go to well, insert point and it's already got my pre-selected so I'll just reopen that and we want to go from here to here it already selects midpoints and that's going to help us out when it comes to sharpening it up uh, because then we can pull this a lot easier like that as opposed to pulling that where it starts to affect it more down low um, you know it's just sometimes we can add extra geometry that'll help us out I might even just back it all off for the moment um, doesn't really matter for this case um, what else can we do so we can then um, use alt and drag so like we did with um, the sunglasses again so if we hold in alt on my keyboard oh, sorry alt on the keyboard and drag out we can pull straight out from the surface uh, this is where we want to try and keep it close to the uh, helmet as well because obviously we want it on the helmet and we've got ways of reattaching it um, but it is a little bit more complicated than using just the face snapping uh, but of course we can get other kind of shapes that we wouldn't otherwise get from just the face snapping out of it um, so we can bring it you can kind of see where it starts to cross into the other surface um, so we can do that, drag another one out, and right now we can see it's pulling it out in that kind of direction because of the way I've got this set up in the selection space, but I'm going to stick with it so I can get it rotated down, we pull it out, we rotate it down a bit more, then we have to go from the top view and make it match uh, the rear of the helmet and yeah, as you can see it starts to get quite confusing so you might actually change it to something regular uh, the problem is it starts to really throw off the size of the selection uh, you want your edges to all be about the same um, width so somewhere there seems all right this has come out something like that and then we can um, just create like a last face between these all right so that's twisted that's obviously not what we want we can delete that create another face and just pay attention it's coming out from the top there oh, sorry pay attention even more than I did then and what we can see is it's blue for some reason it wants to go bottom first and we go okay so now we're starting to get these shapes coming across it that's not you know the prettiest thing ever but it will do now what we can also look at is we want all these points to be on the surface so we can then look at I'm just gonna save again um, modify and pull and what this says is it snaps selected t-splines vertices to a face or a surface so that's exactly what we want to do and target select can be auto pull type surface points or control points so if we click we can see it's pulling them out um, and this is really convenient in how it starts to snap so if we pick this one it just well it just works um, so it's pretty convenient sometimes you can just select all of it and it'll pull it all out uh, in most cases that just works as well um, but obviously the more points you have the more complicated that procedure is going to be and it might start slowing down but that works pretty well for me um gotta say i'm happy with that um then you know you might find that you're not super happy with how some of these gaps end up being um and you want to edit them uh this is where having the right selection space really helps so oh sorry the right type of coordinate space so if you pull that up 
and tweak it a little. It doesn't pull it out too far from the actual surface. And we want to adjust this one a bit more to just kind of get a bit nicer of a transition there. And it is really easy to then just go pull and select, you know, all of these ones in this area. So it only has to calculate that again. And we'll do a final pull just before we offset this whole thing as well, just to make sure, but that's pretty good. Um, there is one other way that I would recommend, um, which is you, uh, you can use the bridge. And what I'll try and do is bridge from this side to this side. Uh, so we can go to modify bridge. And what we're gonna do is select down here and the opposite side of that one is this one over here. So we go side two. We select that, it works like that. And from the top view, we can start to think about how many faces we might want. We could go one there, one there, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six. So maybe we'll just go six and we'll see what happens. So six faces evenly spaced across there. So it bridges it, it's still tight. Um, it's just gone straight across, so it's thrown us right off our surface. Um, the problem is there isn't a lot of uh, contour to it. So we can easily grab it and modify it here first. Um, we can grab, or we can just grab the whole face and squeeze that down a bit. Oops. Grab the face, squeeze it down. So now we've got a nice tighter one there. This is a bit large. So, you know, we might actually look at uh, splitting this before we bridge it, but again, it's not really a problem. Um, we can see what happens if we try and pull all of this to the surface. So yeah, see what we can see now is it's pulling it straight to it in what it thinks is the best manner. Now that's not really bad. That's done it okay. Um, but the problem I see is that this one, instead of going straight up, it went to the side. So we don't want to let the pull function do all of the work. What we can do is if I can select this, we can get it, go up until, and we can use our, change our display mode. I use Alt 1, 2, and 3 on the keyboard and sometimes using the box mode works really well. So we just get it to the point where it's clipping through a little bit. Uh, we wanna go to coordinate world space on this one, just so we're going straight up. And the same over here until we're going straight up. Now this is gonna leave a huge um, sort of, uh, almost like a, a fillet on that, but we're just gonna live with that for the moment. So what we then need to do is re-pull select the points and you can see they're traveling a lot less further and it's starting to get really clean and tidy there. If we want to look at uh, reducing this area, we can actually modify these here. Now there's a couple ways you can do that. You could edit the form in the selection space or coordinate space, however you want it. Um, and by bringing these in tighter, you can see how that's reducing it. Uh, the problem is it doesn't always work, especially, especially on complex surfaces. So I like to use the slide edge tool. It was up there, but it's down here as well for reference. And what you can do is select it and set a number of how far in you want that edge to slide. So if I go to box mode, it shows exactly where it's moving based on the box. Um, you can select multiple, but it's good to do it one at a time. So. This, these numbers uh, mean, well, zero is at the start and one is at the end, right? So think about if you're going in the middle, you wanna go 0.5, three quarters is 0.75. So maybe we wanna go negative 0.3, which will push it there. And now we can run the slide edge on this um, 0.3 as well. Just take care to note your negatives and well, non-negative numbers. So you can see how that's brought that in. And when we have a look, it's a, quite a bit tighter um, compared to what it was before. 
The other problem is that there isn't a huge amount of information here. Uh, so it's what it's trying to do is blend all of this together. So we can use the insert edge feature, selecting down here, make sure to drag it somewhere we want. So we can go negative 0.5. And when we swap to that view, we see that that does tighten up a little bit. Um, the trick is not to get carried away with that. Like, you know, we could grab it and slide it right up and that's going to make it really tight but you do start to get some curvature issues it's not really that bad there um, you know I would probably even agree to slide that further a bit more but once we start adding in more geometry it's going to get a lot more complex as well so you don't want to focus on one area too much you don't want to come in and fully refine this absolutely perfectly however you, how you want it um, just yet you want to do everything in stages and um, sort of work like that. So one thing I think, I think we need some more faces at the back here to work to bridge the front to the back. Um, so right now, I think what I'll do is create a bridge from this. Um, yeah, maybe a bridge from there to about here. So these ones are quite narrow and I might actually just go ahead and delete that. So now we've got uh, a bit more to work with there. Um, yeah, okay, so I'll bridge from here down to here, and I might just preemptively slide this one a little across to give us a bit more room. Now, it doesn't really matter that that's pulled off, we'll just live with that for now. So, we're going to go ahead and run the bridge from this face and we just want to make sure side two is selected there. Sometimes it does it on its own. Sometimes it makes a real mess trying to join them. Uh, we probably don't need six. We can go four faces maybe. Again, we can always add more later. Um, and what we want to do, same sort of thing. We want to edit the form. At this point, I'm happy to go in coordinate space as boxes. So the, problem, the reason why you want to do it in box mode is because if you're trying to line this up, uh, in the sort of smooth display. It looks right there, but as soon as you look at the actual raw data of it, it's way too high. So we do that. Oops, wrong one. Go about there, just so when the, you get these little graphical uh, collisions. And about there. So having a look at that, it starts to shape up. And what I might just do now is maybe just one more bridge from this side to this side, and we'll say we're happy with the bridging, and we'll uh, tighten it up. So what I wanna do here is insert an edge on each side of this. Uh, so we can do that with the well, insert edge feature. We get an option to select uh, simple or exact, um, I prefer using the simple mode because the exact might add some more data to try and keep everything strictly in place. And both. So what both does is obviously it puts it on both sides. So if we go 0.4, it's going to put an edge on both sides, give us a lot more detail there. And, you know, we can even come in and then just delete that center if we want to make a really wide one. At this point, I don't. So we just want to run that bridge again. I think the bridge command can be really useful. Um, and it works fine with all this symmetry. So on this one, we ran six, so we'll just run six again for consistency if we ever want to join these up, uh, which we will, but we get that, drag it up, make sure we're in the right mode, uh, adjust. So as you see, it can be really somewhat simple to go about making such a complex form. Um, it doesn't look like much in the box mode, but then when you go about shaping it up, sorry, like that, it starts to get quite complex and it looks as though, you know, we've purposefully designed this thing to look this way. You should actually have a proper plan when you're going about drawing yours up. Um, you should sketch yours first and then come into CAD. Don't uh, come into CAD without a sketch. Uh, or, a, or a pretty good plan of what you're looking to create um, just because you will end up living in CAD forever and never be happy with what you get. 
Um, I do want to bring that up slightly like that. So you can see if that's going to be, yeah. So that ends up being a lot smoother, which is I think pretty good. Bring this one down a little. So we can go in and start tweaking some shapes up, um, making sure everything's how we want it. Throw some uh, curvature in there. You don't want everything to be too rigid because already we're making such a complex thing and it doesn't take a much more effort to make things start to look really advanced and cool. Um, check it over in the box mode. Maybe we even want to bring these ones in a little like that so we can get some uh, a little bit of wonky curvature there. Um, it's fine if we do it on purpose. And we'll just hit save again. Always save as you go. Um, all right, so we get to that. Then what we want to do is just re-pull everything to the surface. It's mostly pretty close. This might actually go off on its own way a bit. Um, so we'll just edit it again in the selection space and just get it a bit closer. This might have to go down a tad. Yeah, it's all still pretty close. So modify, pull. We'll see if we can select everything. Uh, it didn't grab absolutely everything. It doesn't matter because because some of it's symmetric, it'll just grab the other side anyway. Uh, auto, surface points, and it seems like it's pulling these up quite nicely. Yep, yep, yep. All right, so I can say I'm happy with that. And if we just go back and forward on that command, we can see how it pulls them up and straightens everything out. So that's quite good. I'm happy with that. It looks like it's all worked. The curvature doesn't look too bad. It looks relatively smooth and nice. So what we can go about doing now is actually thickening it out. And like we did with the sunglasses, we're going to thicken it in um, this workspace because we're gonna get a lot of options for adjusting the surface in really cool ways. So we're gonna punch it out by about 15 mil. Um, which looks quite thick, but again, this is the foam area. And as you can see, it comes in looking really well. It's got all these creases, which are great. We don't want to get rid of the creases. Um, if we do, it starts to go really blobby, really fast. Um, and we don't want that. So, you know, turning it off, it just starts to look like a blobby mess. I always suggest keeping it creased as long as possible um, because then you start to, if you start to take away the creases, you really start to lose the identity of the design. You need sharp contours on things that are really curvy and interesting like this. Um, so from there, we can go about modifying a bit more. So on a lot of these helmets we look at, they've got sort of sweeping designs towards the rear um, like, you know, these sweep towards the back. This has this cool little edge thing that comes out. Um, same with this. There's some, some little flicks and details in them. And we can get that going on ours now that it's thickened out a bit more. Um, so we can grab some edges and pull them out like that. And right away we see we're starting to look, you know, some speed racer, super sleek forms going on. Um, the very tip here would be good to bring out as well. It depends on uh, it, how the angle's set up. It should be good to just pull straight out horizontally, um, like that. Let's double check. All right, so again, going back to box mode, you can check to make sure that these things make sense. So you generally want like a straight line on that. It'll bring it out very well. Um, come up to the top, and we're gonna exaggerate it a bit because why not? Um, that looks pretty neat. We'll do the top one. That looks all right. And bring that out a bit. And we can even do it on the inner sides too. Um, so it really starts giving us this complex geometry. Some of these look really cool when they're set up as um, chamfers. So there's a couple other ways you can get these kind of interesting um, chamfers going on these surfaces. Let's do it down here actually. So we can select these and what it does is it puts the thing right in the middle. So sometimes you can get away with just stretching that out. So knowing how to use these scale tools is really important. Um, you can stretch them out like that. And you know, if you want it to 
go quite crazy you can um, or what you can then do is then shift the whole thing back so it's really sort of popping out here um, that might be a bit too extreme so we can just do that and then uh, pull it up and back a bit so it kind of looks flat there but here we get this really large contour um, and even if you just grab the whole thing and shift it in a different direction you get that sort of whole sleekness of it pulling in one direction um, again the back on here if you want it to be really sporty like I do you just pop that out and it starts to look well kind of sleek there and now we're actually going to look at you know that's just modifying the top right the top face um, we can bring this out and down a bit mm, maybe forwards a bit too to give it like that sort of leading edge. Maybe not, I don't mind. Um, let's undo that for now and see what happens when we pull the bottom out. So a lot of this is just experimentation anyway. Like I'm no bike helmet designer. Um, I think I've made that very clear with the way I've been modeling this up. Um, but as you can see, you can make these decisions for yourself. Um, because it is not too difficult to actually go about doing this. Um, it's actually, you know, it's quite fun. Um, but enough about that. Um, let's add some, now some really interesting details into these contours. So right now we've been modifying the outside shape and what we want to look at doing is modifying these sort of basic looking areas in here and that can actually be quite simple so what we want to do and there's a couple ways we can do this as well um, what we want to do is sort of push and pull the middle of these surfaces the problem is there's no lines here to modify so what we can do is go through and add a whole series of points it's really good because it selects a middle section for you to work with um, and putting it in the middle is probably the best way to go about this as well so happy with that where is it there it is and we go okay it doesn't change up the surface much at all it does add some detail like you know the surface might become a bit stricter but it should ideally put it right in the middle and not mess anything up but then we can do something like um, double clicking it selects the whole loop or line we edit the form and we can do the same sort of thing uh, selection space kind of picks an average of all of those points and we can pull it in to get like a nice sharp loop there um, and other things you can do is select it all and deselect the outer ones um, so you're not changing that outside graphic and just pop that in a little and that starts to look really sleek um, same thing on this because we've got this circle here we can have a go at seeing what happens when we um, insert an edge so right now because we've got this area where it meets up quite weird here it's only going to want to put a, an edge on this top section which you know is fine we just want to make sure it's 0.5 and we go okay we can repeat insert edge across the bottom And what we want to do now is insert a point from one spot to the other. So this does actually mess with the way this is sort of created. Um, yeah, so that right there has actually broken it and it won't go out of box mode at the moment. Let's see if that fixes it. Okay, so that's fixed it. It needed a solid loop all the way around there. Um, this might not be the best option to edit this. Uh, just because now we've got this weird wonky area here um, it looks fine there but it comes up with an error so sometimes we can actually look at um, how we can repair the body and anything like that sometimes needs attention um, yeah so it doesn't know how to go about repairing this body properly we can hit auto repair um, but it doesn't really do too much there's other things we can look at um, like making the body uniform with which sort of blurs out some of the areas but again it can't really calculate how this little triangle should work um, so what I'm going to do is just back off it 
undo and leave it at this. And we can just play around with these lines a bit for now because it's not crucial. Um, you can fudge it all to make it work if you really want it to, but um, the look we're going for, where we just want this to get tight and then flatten out again, um, it's absolutely fine with that. There's, there's no problem there. Um, so again, just go through, add some of these details. I could do, you know, the whole thing here, the whole rest of it, but I don't think I really need to. Maybe I'll just put another one across the top. Um, so again, insert point, probably the best way, just because with insert edge, it goes a bit funny around corners. Um, so this way we can just make sure we're going exactly where we want. And okay, so I was silly and shouldn't have done that. So I'll just go okay. But you wanna close these loops off. You don't wanna leave them open like I did just there. So you just hit insert point and fill it up. And now this will behave quite nice. Again, we can double click, um, deselect the outer edges if we don't wanna change the form too much and just pop it down a bit. So it starts to get real sort of crazy looking in that uh, in that sort of good complex design sort of way I think um, you're obviously allowed to be the judge of that um, yeah so we've got that and now we want to say we're super happy with our form we'd love it it's the best we want to get some of these um, extra foam supports in um, so especially on, okay, that's going to make me buy that. Um, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Okay. Even on like, yeah, this one, sometimes these, these supports aren't at the top level. Um, and it's very common because it adds a lot of, um, rigidity as well. So like, uh, it's harder to see on that one. Uh, here we go. Here's a good example. So like this little section down in here, it's not at that top level. Um, so we want to go in and add some bridges across these larger bits. Um, the best way I've found to do that is to insert an edge across the t uh, from the bottom. So we go modify, insert edge, and we don't want it to be... So sometimes we have to rotate it around. Hopefully it brings it all around instead of just in that little section. Um, it shouldn't have a problem, but... Say we want to make it uh, about a third, we can go negative 0.3, hit enter and see what it does. Okay, so it hasn't gone all the way around, which is a bit disappointing, but again, it's because of these little edge bits. Um, so sometimes you just have to know why it's doing that because you can absolutely work around it. So I'm just going to go through and select this. For some reason, it's defaulted to negative one, so we just type in negative 0.3 and then what we want to make sure we do, we don't want to offset this now or insert an edge that's negative 0.3 because it might not connect to here properly. So always when there's a last little bit, um, use the insert point command and just join them up like that manually. Um, and we can see that it's looped up pretty great. And even down here, modify insert point. Uh, I'm just going to guess this is 0.3 there and somewhere there because I'm not going to bridge it there anyway. It doesn't really matter. Uh, now what we want is just a good uh, smaller section to bridge across. If we try and bridge, say, this area to this area, it's going to become like a huge mess. So why don't I show you? So there to there, right? We get this massive bit of foam. Uh, well, it will be foam and we don't really want that. So what we can then do is, um, you know, we can even just do it on this bottom bit here and insert an edge, negative 0.3. It ends up being a little bit small there. Um, or we could double click the whole loop and insert it there. So it's got a nice little reference for all of it. Uh, it does tighten up the geometry a bit, but that shouldn't be a big deal because uh, you can just go in and smooth it out a bit later. All right, so we want to go from here to, well, this one's relatively the same size. So we can go and bridge from here to here. 
and sometimes these don't end up very well like you might find that this point is here you just got to be careful of where you click so if we turn on preview it's showing us that it's doing a big bridge we want to turn that down to about three so we just have to pull these two up and we can maintain our crease edges or not uh, i probably would because that's going to keep the bottom locked and we can see it's starting to bring it over um, we can crease the top of it around here to try and tighten it up a bit uh, but that well that doesn't always work does it um, and we can even look at repairing the surface around here now so if we go repair body uh, it does come up with these so we can hit uh, auto fix sometimes it'll bridge it out a bit more um, and we can even look at again making it uniform sometimes it smooths it out a bit better than we can but it doesn't really matter we just need to get these and bring them out to the right distance so again that selection space is going to be very useful for us and this is where we got to do it pretty well by eye somewhere there somewhere there and so you know you can imagine if we go through do all these um, it's going to start to fill out what I can actually just do as well is hit a for appearances and go down to um, where is it foam and we can put that polyurethane coloring on it so we can start to get the idea of how it's all looking even though it's kind of gross looking um so 48 47 and we get some weird mapping issues here but it doesn't matter because we're still in the sculpt form um so you know we might actually think that's probably a bit too skinny so we could actually just go all the way back and add in you know slide this up add another band um so we could add another band that's 0.5 between there and we could use two of these to bridge across to here um, there's heaps of options for actually bridging these up and that looks pretty good yeah but again like you know we get some of this works some of it doesn't and um depending on how you modify these um it could get neater or messier really quick so if we look at it we've got that that really big edge there if we insert an edge down here it's going to sharpen it up heaps like that so that looks really good now how that's a nice soft transition um, and we just want to make sure we're sticking to that as we go through um, and then yeah of course bring these out uh, where we want them I'm only going to do one of these for now because they can take up a bit of time. Um, but that doesn't really matter. So, you know, imagine we've got a bunch of those and of course it's been mirroring it on the other side. So that's all good. Um, so let's say we're happy with that. We hit finish form. And we get this form finished out. We can see it's all pretty clear on the inside. It's not jutting into that inside skin too much. Maybe this front bit is. We can go in and edit that. Uh, not a really big deal. What we then have to do, after saving of course, is go through and we want to fill at these edges a bit so we can simulate what it looks like when some plastic's molded over this. Um, so I'm just going to hit F for fill it. I'm going to let it select all the chain and I'm going to have a look at five seems a bit much two seems maybe a bit little so we can just go three ideally you would want to use caudal fillets on this uh, but they can take a longer time to calculate you see this is all the areas where it breaks it up um, I'm going to leave that up to you for now uh, because I would much rather have this load up and just work so I'm actually going to go through and put the fillets on everywhere, at least the main surfaces, and I'm 
yeah, and we've lost our symmetry stuff, but that's okay, because there's only a couple more. Let's make sure we have a look at the back down here. Hope that doesn't round it off too much. We might have to go through and do these on our own, because we can find that sometimes fielding these completely kills it. Um, eh, that's not too bad. I'm going to say I'm happy with that. The bottom's good. Uh, we can... Uh, look at doing the inside as well. It's not a big deal, but we'll probably do that as a larger fillet anyway So I'm just gonna say I'm happy with that. I hit okay And once that loads up We've got Essentially what's what we have now is the foam section of the helmet So as much as it looks like the outer bit we need to create an outer bit of this and We can do that in well, there's a couple of ways I guess the best way is to create an offset of pretty much the whole thing. Um, it's a good thing I didn't round that out because now it won't copy across those inner surfaces. And we can go OK. And what we want to do then is delete all the areas where a nice plastic surface would not be. Um, so I'm going to let this run its course, it shouldn't take too long, but you know how Fusion likes to pretend it's crashing a bit. All right, so we've got that. We can hide our main body, resave it again. And we then have to go and get rid of everything that's essentially below these fillets. Um, so we just go delete and we're gonna go through and delete all of these faces. As you can tell, this is probably the most fun part of CAD modeling, selecting all the individual faces. Um, so go through, delete these. <laughs> you might be able to save some time by just, you know, not having to click these if you delete everything that's around them, but um, we don't want to delete the edges, but. It can take time. Um, the other re the thing is, like, you could do it before you do the fillet, but then you have to apply the fillet to both of them anyway, and you can't drag it over the edge. Um, so I'm just going to sit here and kind of complain about it a bit more. At least the less complex you make it, the less things you have to cut out. So I guess that's another good reason for ensuring that everything's not too overdone. Um, you can break some of these up, like, you know, you can make creased edges on the inside of these um, if you're going for a real specific look with super sharp contours and you can fill up those out later. Um, but I guess because we're trying to learn all these freeform tools quite well, you want to try and do some nice freeforms. Um, it kind of looks like everything, I think. Well, let's see what happens when I hit delete. All right, so now it's deleted it. That was pretty quick. And we've just got this skin. Uh, I've forgotten to delete the bottom. I've now deleted the bottom. And we got this skin of our helmet. So what we can do is show. And if we find our foam again, apply it to that. And the problem is we've got two surfaces sitting exactly on each other. Um, we can try and thicken this, but because of the fillets, it might not take very well. So there are some other ways to get around it. So let's just try. We'll select it. It's going to freak out and try and figure out this whole surface a little bit. Uh, it'll get there, I'm sure. All right, so it's selected. Oh, it was default set to 15 mil, so I was freaking out. So I'm going to punch in one mil and see if it's capable of doing that. But yeah, these these tight corners um, and the way the fillets calculate may cause it to be 
a bit problematic. It looks like it's going to work. That's a good sign. Um, is that going outside or inside? I think it's going on the outside. I think we should be all right. It's computing it. It might take a while depending on processor and all of that um, because, well, just because. And Fusion likes to take a lot of time for some areas and not others. All right, updating graphics. All right. Beautiful, so we have a thickened surface on the outside. It is really slim. Um, they're generally quite thin. They're probably less than one mil anyway, but for this case, it doesn't matter. Look at that. All right, that's starting to look really cool. In my own time, I'm gonna go through and modify this for when we get into super awesome rendering later, but that is a great start. Um, so let's go ahead and take it over to the rendering space to look at just how we're going to throw some decals on this. And you know what, I'm just going to fill up that bottom edge by about 12, because why not? It doesn't like it. That's why not. Uh, 10? Okay, 10. 10's good. All right, so it just makes it look a little tidier and yeah, that should be fine. All right, so again, I'll do the buckles in another video. Uh, this is just so everyone can have a place to start off. Uh, if you're going for something simple, you follow the other tutorial. If you're going for something more complicated, you can start to follow this one around a bit. Um, so now, yeah, we can look at, we've got it here. We just want to go to appearance and play around with um, this polyurethane. Uh, 47 was all right. I would prefer it look a bit darker. Um, you, there is the fusion appearances where we can look at um, wherever it might be. Uh, other, even like a bumpy type of rubber might work. It's about what looks right or what we can get to look good. Um, yeah, okay, so it's freaking out because maybe I haven't relaunched Fusion and updated the last graphics. I um, mean, the last, yeah, update files. And we can see we've got some little errors here. So we can have a try at looking at the texture mapping controls. So when we select our um, object, we've got the way it projects the um, texture onto the surface. And this is really cool. When you turn on diagnostic texture, it shows you exactly how it's trying to figure it out. So you can sort of get an idea when the freeform tool is starting to look a bit weird that there's going to be a graphics issue in that area. So anywhere where these don't line up perfectly, we're going to start to see a mismatch of textures. We can play around with some of these settings. So like going to a box map setting sometimes just fixes it up. Um, and what that means is it projects it from a front plane, a side plane, and a top plane. And like in this case, it looks pretty good. Um, I'm just going to see if we can find an area where it is gone weird. Um, but like that's pretty good. I'm totally fine with any render that comes out with that. Um, that's worked great just by changing it to the box map. So have a look at those settings because it can really change how it looks. Like here we can find where some of the seams are happening, um, but it's really minor. So no problem with that. Um, and all of a sudden I'm happier with the color now that's starting to render out nicer. Uh, then we can just go and throw a type of paint on it. We can go white. Um, it's a bit boring. Uh, I don't know if it's gonna let me use the metallics wherever they are, paint, yeah, so we can get like a metallic blue or metallic yellow, I do like yellow, um, and then have a quick look at the in canvas render. So obviously it's going to take a while because it's quite complex. There's a lot of lighting going on, um, but you can really see those sort of metallic flecks showing up. Um, 
so that's really cool how that's coming and you can't always tell the difference between like a metallic or another surface if you're just using um if you don't have the in canvas render set on so even something like the white paint looks should look better with the thing on yeah so that that punches a bit more it looks a bit wider when we export it at a higher resolution we'll be able to um slap on some you know photoshop adjustments and really make the white pop um but we're also going to just quickly have a look at putting a decal on if you haven't played around with this already it's quite easy um so for everyone who's got a logo and just wants to put it on as a sticker um I've made my amazing logo here and I'm going to put it on just this back sort of lip. Um, it might take a second, but then we can just play around with orientating it, scaling it. Um, so you can have it quite simple if you're into that and don't want it to be super complex. Um, and just stick it on like that. Uh, or if you want to go, you know, um, really crazy with it you can drag it to somewhere in between if you've got like a weird graphic and oh, it's gone down here so let's just see if clicking it there you know we can bring it up and essentially splash it over the surface as well um that's probably a bit much but you can get some interesting things then again it does start to get weird and you get graphical glitches there um, so, you know, there's some options. Uh, I'm not sure if you can texture map the decals, uh, not properly yet, but you can project details and stuff. I probably should have left that as it was because it was looking fine. Um, so yeah, again, decal, select it, find somewhere nice to put it. Um, again, we'll just leave it on the back here. And this works really well if you have a PNG image. So make sure if you're rendering something up the or exporting a logo for this, you're exporting it as a PNG and not as like a JPEG. Because if you do it as a JPEG, it's going to have um, some issues with the texturing of like the inside areas. So in, in Illustrator, I sketched up a blob, made some text, outlined the text, and then cut it out from the blob. And that allowed me to save out the blob with these shapes in it um, and clear. So however I changed the color of the helmet, the decal stays the same. Um, and that way, no matter what the color of the helmet, everyone will know my name. Um, so we'll look as well in the future at putting on some cool patterns, seeing if we can get better ways for them to map across all the textures. But uh, I think for now, this is um, it's heaps to go on. I think I've been talking to myself for about over 50 minutes now. And what you should do is hopefully have a crack at this. Even if you're not interested in modeling up these types of helmets, you should really have a crack because we're going to get some super cool surfacing out of it. And in my own time, I'm gonna go through, clean all this up, make it look really cool and see what level of quality we can push. And then, you know, after doing the buckle tutorial, we'll probably attach it to this one as opposed to the other one. Um, but yeah, um, thanks for bearing with me for all this time. See ya.